Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. I am in New York City for one night only. We are at the Pepcom Digital Experience. This is their holiday show and uh, inside are about 70 companies that sell the kinds of things that we review and talk about on the channel. So I figured I would come down and check out what's going on. So let's head on in and see what some of the new stuff is for the holiday season. So we're over here at the Logitech booth and you all know I love keyboards and they've got a, a new one here called the Craft. Now this is gonna cost about $200, but it has a dial on this one here. And uh, this is useful if you're doing video editing and other creative stuff. So you can do kind of a, a jog dial for your video editing application. And there's some other stuff that it can do as well. So that's pretty cool. Backlit, as you can see, it's uh, Bluetooth or it works with a dongle. And the other thing I found interesting, just because my dad's been using one for the last 20 years, is this is their first new uh, trackball in 20 years. It's a modern device here, it's wireless, and it's adjustable because they said that people were uh, propping up their trackballs with stuff. So uh, this trackball has some ergonomically uh, appropriate ways to adjust it, and it's got all the buttons that you would expect from a modern mouse. That's gonna sell for about 100 bucks. And they got these cool looking Bluetooth speakers. We can't uh, hear what they sound like because it's so noisy in here, but uh, they have some motion controls on them so it detects when your hand gets closer to adjust the volume and everything. A couple of gaming things here at the Logitech booth. They've got a new wireless mechanical keyboard. This is the G613, 150 bucks, and it is completely wireless. And then this was interesting. So this is their uh, Lightspeed gaming mouse. And uh, what this has is a mouse pad that charges the mouse as you're using it. So there is a uh, little battery in here. Maybe you can uh, it'll help, help us out here and get that out of there. Um, but this little thing will interact with the mouse pad while you're using it. Whoops. To, uh, I'm breaking everything here. Uh, to allow you to charge the mouse while you're playing so you never actually have a dead mouse anytime when you are looking to play a game or whatever else like that. So they've got the uh, creme de la creme here at 150 bucks, and they have a less expensive one at $99. And it's a pretty thin mouse pad, right? It's, uh, so that's the whole thing right here. So this is the capacitive pad underneath it. And then you use the mouse on top of this surface here. So it slides nicely here and charges up from the bottom. And then if you're looking to spend a little less, this is not an auto recharging mouse, but it runs on double A's, 70 bucks for this one. And uh, it is a high performance mouse. They say it's got a similar sensor to the top of the line one, and it will last 18 months in its non-gaming mode. And then uh, a little less than that when you're uh, doing the hardcore gaming, but uh, pretty good battery life because they are double A's and replaceable and rechargeable. So over here at the Epson booth, and about a year ago, maybe two years ago, we looked at their EcoTank printer, and uh, last year it was a kind of a retrofit where they put a big tank of ink on their existing printing technology, and now they've got something new, uh, which are new EcoTank printers. We're going to start with the low-cost one here. Uh, this is $299, and it uh, basically comes with, they say, two years of ink. And one of the issues that they had with it last year was that uh, the ink wasn't keyed to the color. So you could accidentally put the wrong color in. But what they've done now is uh, keyed every color. They also put a valve on this too. So you have less uh, likelihood of putting the wrong ink in the wrong tank and it also won't spill as easily. Uh, these bottles are a lot less expensive than an ink cartridge might be on a traditional printer. And it might be a good way to go. I think $2.99 is a good price point for consumers. They also now have a five color ink uh, printer here. This looks like a uh, all-in-one. And this one goes for $5.99, five colors, so it'll be a little better with uh, photos and whatnot. We'll see if we can try to get one of these in for a review coming up soon. So we're over here at the Hasbro booth, and as you know, I have two daughters, and one is crazy about Play-Doh. This has a tech angle, though, I promise. So uh, this is their new system called Play-Doh Touch. And what you can do is construct Play-Doh creations. I made this one earlier on this little pad here, and then you image it with an iPad. And then when you do this, um, it will actually render this thing that you made into the universe and try to figure out uh, how to make it uh, interactive. So we, we made this guy with one leg. Earlier he had two legs and a head and everything else. Um, and it really allows these kids to create something and give it life and it will live forever uh, inside the app here. It's really neat and uh, it seems like it can uh, very effectively render what the kid's intention is uh, as they're putting it together. And then you have some molds. So for example, he can uh, scan this butterfly here and then uh, use that mold as an attribute for our creature here. So you can take that uh, butterfly there and drag it onto the 
creature and now he's got wings and they have this world the kids can explore so they can uh, play with play-doh make these creatures and then go and explore a virtual world with them after they do it. I just thought this was pretty cool and if you've got kids I think you might find it pretty cool too. So we've been doing a lot of Internet of Things devices and I figured I would stop by the Yale booth. This is their real living lock. Now it's cool about this is that it doesn't require any kind of computer uh, so you could set it up with just the, uh, the pin pad here and you can type in a pin code um, I don't know how to get it to turn on, but you can use a pin code and nothing else, or you can add a module to the back of it here, and this will allow you to connect it up with a number of home hubs that are out there. So that's kind of a good choice. You can go with a smart lock or just make it a pin code lock, but there's no physical key. Now you might be wondering what happens if you lose the battery that's on this thing. They do say it gives you a lot of warning. Uh, on the bottom, I don't know if Antonio can get in here and see that. Maybe we'll do it from the side here. Uh, you basically plug a a uh, nine volt battery into the bottom of this that'll give it enough juice so that you can unlock it. So if you are locked out after ignoring all the notifications, you can run out, buy a nine volt battery, plug it in here, type in the code and get back in your door. This one costs $170 without the home hub component. The module, which you can buy separately later or together, uh, all in it's $220. So not too bad for a complete lock replacement. Again, no physical key. And then they've also got a doorbell product, and this is $180, I think they said it was, $179. No subscription, and it records onto an SD card built into the monitor here. So you get local recording with it, and it'll also um, ding your mobile phone to let you know something is going on. It wires in with your existing doorbell, and then the module here on the back is uh, USB charge chargeable. So it has a battery on the monitor, uh, but the doorbell itself is connected to your uh, doorbell wiring to power it. But nice to see something without a subscription and local recording, which is something we're not seeing a lot of these days in the IoT space. So we're over at the Anchor booth, who are known for batteries, but now they're branching out. This is called the Nebula Capsule, and what this is is a projector. I can project onto myself here, but it might be easier to see it on the screen. And this projector has an Android computer essentially built into it running Android 7. So you can go to uh, YouTube or whatever else you want to go to on this thing because the apps are integrated, but it also has an HDMI input. And of course, because it's made by Anchor, they've got an Anchor battery in there too. So it should last a couple of hours on a charge, which is pretty neat. So I kind of like this concept of integrating an Android device, a full media device, uh, into a projector like this. It's pretty bright. We'll have to uh, get it into test, but we are uh, under some pretty bright lights right now. It looks pretty decent on this screen. We projected it onto the ceiling earlier. It does have a pretty good throw to it. It's a 540p sensor, so it's in line with a lot of other Pico projectors, but I am impressed with the brightness on this. Uh, right now, this is $199 if you pre-order on their Indiegogo page, uh, $299 afterward. I'm not usually a big fan of some of the Indiegogo stuff, but uh, Anchor's a company that I've been following and have been buying products from for quite a while. They tend to pull things off, and they've met their goal on this, and it is a product that exists, and we're playing with it, so that is why I am comfortable talking about it. So there's a couple of different colors here also. they got a red one and a black one here. Really cool-looking device. We'll have to get one in to test it soon. So one thing I wasn't expecting to see today is the Essential phone. This is a new Android phone from the creator of Android. A lot of people have been talking about this phone. Very uh, thin, thin bezels on this thing. And uh, a lot of people were asking about the notches both on this phone and on the, uh, the new iPhone X. And what they did here was actually put enough screen real estate at the bottom so you can run a movie 16 by 9 without that notch getting in the way. So let's pull up a video from my YouTube channel here. And if I go full screen with it, you can see that the video is not being notched out because the aspect ratio below the notch is sufficient for a 16 by 9 video. So that's kind of a neat way to uh, get around that. So if we go back out to the front here, you can see that. Now attached to this, let me put the mic down here for a second, is a 3D camera that attaches to the back of the phone. It attaches magnetically so you can do 3D or 360, excuse me, live streams uh, wherever you go. Pretty small little device here that just clips on the back. Let me show you. Like so, and it you know, secures itself with a magnet and uh, off you run with it. It's a pretty cool phone. I really like the way it looks and uh, feels pretty nice. I'll try to get one of these in to review. It's kind of hard to get these right now, but uh, I really like what I see here. All right, so we're at a booth for a company called Hexa, 
and they've got this creepy robot here. It looks like a spider. I'm going to put it down on the table here. If you don't like spiders, you might want to turn away. So when you think about the robot uprising, uh, this might be what happens when it finally takes place. But uh, what's cool about what this thing is, is a uh, pre-built robotic platform. So if you're going to try to learn how to program robotics, you can get a robot out of the box that has all the sensors and is balancing, and you can learn the basics of the software design without having to build your own hardware first. And that might be a good first step for a lot of people, because after all, when you buy a computer, or if you want to learn how to program a computer, you don't build the computer first, you learn how to program. So here they're trying to uh, get people into robotics by uh, purchasing this thing out of the box, getting a complete robot ready to go, and you can learn how to code this robot. And then as your hardware skills improve, you probably have the skills you need to uh, program your own robot too. And as you can see, he does a lot of movements here. He's got sensors all over him. Uh, and he goes for about $1,000. And uh, I think it's probably not so unreasonable, especially if you're trying to learn robotics. And it looks like it might be a pretty accessible platform for folks. So I'm over at the HyperX booth, and they've got a new headset here. And this is one of those things you have to feel, but They've got this new like leatherette here. It is so soft, it feels like suede. Um, they are calling this the most comfortable gaming headset in the world. So we'll have to get one in to test it to put it to the test. But it feels pretty solid to me. It's like mostly metal here. It's really got a nice feel to it. And it's $99 as you see it. Uh, they're advertising some really good range of sound. Again, we'll have to get it into a quieter place than where we are right now to play around with it. A couple things that are kind of neat about it is that uh, the mic here can detach. You can just pull the entire uh, mechanism out, I think. Let's see. Just like that, so you can uh, not worry about the mic when you don't need it. And then, of course, on the bottom here, you can unplug the cord. Um, so if you're worried about snagging this thing as you're running around, you don't have to worry about that anymore. So kind of a nice little headset here. Metal band on the top. Feels really solid. 99 bucks, not all that expensive. It is analog. It's not a USB thing, but because it's analog, it'll work on everything. And they uh, put a little uh, volume control on here, too. So maybe we'll try to get one of these in. I don't do a lot of headsets on the channel, but I know some of you like to get some insights on them. So we'll see if we can get one to test it out in a couple of weeks. So that was just a small sampling of some of the things we saw at the Pepcom Holiday Spectacular. And this is the kind of video we'll do from CES a little later in the year. So stay tuned. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Black Eyed and Blues Music Hour podcast, Chris Allegretta, John Prawl, William Miller, and Charlie Walden. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.